pretty close to equilibrium here. So we actually use our homebrew software on the big system as well. So we have this, this software that's for homebrewing and we design, um, we design an equipment profile, it's called. For nearly a decade, the Cowtown Yeast Wranglers have gathered together once a month in the back room of the Wild Rose Brewery to share a passion that each and every member has, appreciating the craft of good beer. It is in this setting both men and women, young and old, experienced and beginners, exchange tales of their latest brews. With diversity greater than the range of beers offered at your local pub, this is Calgary's true beer community. If you want some bratwurst and some uh, sauerkraut to match with it, you can go grab a piece back there. It's my religion and, and, and it's my gospel and I, I love to share it just like one of those born again Christian guys. I, I, I was brewing really before there was uh, supply shops or anything around. When I moved here, my friends for a birthday present, they heard me talk about it before, so they bought me the equipment, so, you know, then they could get the, reap the benefits as well. The whole idea is uh, doing something that's uh, of your own manufacture. Calgary has this you know, warm, welcoming, you know, environment, so it was easy for me to get involved. When I talk to my friends, a lot of them are kind of, they, they enjoy drinking my beer, but they don't really understand the passions that I might have towards the hobby. The first meeting that I came to, I met someone who offered to show me, you know, how, how he did it the first time. I wouldn't have branched out making different styles of beer if it wasn't coming to this meeting, yeah. One member rising out of this community to bring his own brand of homebrew to Calgary is Graham Sherman. Jeff and I became good buddies because we, uh, we totally bonded over just taking our hobbies way too far. Beer was kind of a natural progression. We went from coffee to home automation, barbecue, you know, everything we did. Like my barbecue tweets me when my ribs are ready, right? So <laughs> that kind of geekiness in hobbies, is it makes it a lot of fun. So beer was, uh, was quite literally the next, I guess, the next logical step. And it's the one that we just said, whoa, what the heck is going on here? This is the greatest hobby on earth a big production facility, almost every brewery out there has a filter. I hate filters because they pull all the goodness out of beer. When right? you get into and brewing, you, you know, you can make kits and, and that's fine. There's, there's that type of, of home brewing and it's uh, nice and easy. Um, but if you take hobbies too far and you want to see what you're capable of doing home brewing, then uh, next thing you know, you've got, you do, you have a lab and, uh, and you want to make sure everything's repeatable and you want to make sure everything's PID temperature controlled and it's, you know, there's no plastic, it's all stainless and, and you know, it just keeps, there's no end to it, right, clearly. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, that was, um, it really, it really did fit well with the, ki the type of geeks that we are. This is the perfect hobby for it, yeah. Okay, in she goes. <laughs> the very first batch we brewed, at the time, we were drinking a lot of New Belgium. I love New Belgium beers, and uh, so we came up with a, a clone recipe online. It was just a, a fat tire clone recipe, and we said, perfect, that's the one, that's what we'll do. So we went and you know, looked at the homebrew store for all the ingredients, and of course, they didn't have anything in stock of what we needed, so we were like, okay, well, we'll substitute this grain for this grain, and oh, you don't have that yeast, well, let's try this yeast, and, and we, so there was a lot of substitutions just so we could kind of, you know, brew something, and, um, and then, of course, the learning profile or the learning curve was so ridiculous. We didn't know that you couldn't just dump all the hops in the boil kettle at one time. So there's this huge green volcano, you know, spewing all over my deck and, you know, all this madness. Yeah, this video is for Jeff. Sorry you weren't here, Jeff. Is this allowed? Yeah. Should I move the phone? I don't think it's allowed. Whoa! It's carbonated. Yeah, it is. <laughs> nice. I'm like, I hope it's carbonated. Ooh. Brown. Inaugural tool shed brewing. So how are you, how are you feeling about this? This is well, this is a big deal. This is the first one. Check it out. It's not really an amber, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a proper beer. It's proper. <laughs>
the beer that came out was so freaking good. You, th that beer like almost single-handedly solidified that we had found you know, our dream hobby, but also um, it was so much better than Fat Tire and we were thinking like, this is glorious beer. It's full. <laughs> Suddenly beer making kits went from down here to right up here as, as, as good as you could get. That opened up a lot of different styles for people that were only used to our, our, our normal sort of fizzy yellow waters that, that we used to call beer and, and getting taste and getting hops and, and flavor into beer. Uh, and then it just seems to have become uh, the in in thing everybody wants to brew and everybody wants to do it what i've seen even in my five six years here is when i started it was a kit based business everybody wants to do kits to start but then they want to learn how to make it from scratch you know my wife wouldn't let us do it in the kitchen right because we had piano benches and everything set up for gravity fed systems and and so we, uh, we had everything in my backyard tool shed. That was just kind of where we were relegated by my wife to, to, to do this, right? So almost every day after work, we're, you know, I think one day Jeff said to me, he's like, okay, what time are you off work? I'm like, uh, five. And he's like, okay, cool. I'll meet you at six <laughs> o'clock in Tool Shed Brewery. And both of us were like, whoa, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, literally every night after work, we were in there brewing something up. It doesn't take long for you to realize that, you know, you're creating this incredible living beverage that everybody around us is so positively affected by. That was, it was such a shock to know that, you know, I make, I make literally some of the greatest coffee in my, in my kitchen and people come and they go, wow, that's great coffee, right? But they come and they have beer and they're like, Oh my God, right? And people lose their minds about how good, good beer is, right? It's just a, a totally different thing. Beer is community and, 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 and you get a group of people together, you want to have a beer because it's good and easy and you share and it's that social lubricant. Um, so those big caged ones for 40 bucks is no different than thinking about it as a good, well-aged $40 bottle of wine. It's something you don't want to hoard to yourself. It's a beautiful thing and you want to, you want to introduce people to it and share it. And... All right. It's pretty dark in here. We sat in the tool shed one night and we were just said, and we said, okay, this is, it's almost like you, the decision you make when you're gonna get married. You're like, okay, am I gonna do this? Am I gonna ask this person to marry me? Like, this is for life, right? And we sat in the tool shed one day and we were like, if we do this, there's nothing ever that can stop us. We have to be committed to going, like crashing through every brick wall, because there will be several, and there have been way more than we even thought, but we have to be like juggernaut from X-Men, just crashing through every single wall that gets in our way. And uh, so we, we, honestly, it was a, one of those moments. We looked at each other and we just said, yeah. We're, we're going for it. So quit your job and off you go. <laughs> it's pretty hardcore, man. Because there was a minimum volume requirement, Toolshed couldn't brew in Alberta. It was, it was a horrible situation. So we, uh, we found a way around it. What we did was we, we went looking for a place that, that wasn't brewing like around the clock. And we said, okay, can we borrow your brewery? Like on the weekend, when you're not brewing, we'll come in and we'll make our beer. We have our own recipes. We, we bought our own canning line. We had things that we could, we can get our own ingredients and everything. We, you won't even know we exist, right? And, uh, not, and uh, the unfortunate thing was everybody in Alberta was basically at capacity or just didn't have the time or the ability to help out. So we found one place in, in Langley, BC that said, yeah, you can, you can come and use our facility. So, so what we ended up doing was setting up a, a, a license with the AGLC to be importers of beer. So that was a license we could get without any kind of minimums. So we became importers. And the only beer we decided to import was a particular beer made at Dead Frog Brewery in Langley, which was Tool Shed Brewing Company's beer. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool when you go. I woke up one morning and it was, a, it was actually one of our Twitter followers that, that uh, tweeted me in the morning and said, wow, great news, no minimums. And my response was just source, right? Like, I'm not getting excited until I actually see this. And we, when we saw that they had abolished those minimums, I, I called Jeff, we got in our car and drove straight up to St. Albert to meet the AGLC, to hug them and to, uh, and to just go nuts, thanking them for this change because now we can build our brewery. The AGLC is allowing us to come home. Now that the AGLC has gotten rid of the minimums, 
The keg has been tapped for the other craft brewers to live their dreams, and no one is complaining about having too much good beer in the market. Nobody ever complains about having too much selection for wine. You see new wines all the time. These reps are bringing in stuff all the time. And I don't think I've ever met a wine person who said, you know what, there's now too many Pinot Noirs to choose from. In the same sense, I don't think this growing beer community, we're ever going to get to the point where someone goes, there's too many IPAs. You know, I'm sick of all these stouts that we have. Why can't we just have two, three to choose from? You know, I only see it growing. When you start homebrewing, you hear tale of the Sabco. And you go, <laughs> oh, one day. Right? You always think, maybe one day. When I tell people that, that the, we started this thing in my backyard tool shed, they, they go, what? They, they can't believe it. But the beer geeks out there, all the other home brewers, and the guys that are really in, engaged with, yeah. with breweries, they're on Twitter or they're, or they're on Tap. Those guys know the story, and and it was humbling for us to see how many people in that arena kind of lifted us up on their shoulders and said, "This is what we support because this is our dream, and this is kind of you know this is the dream of home brewers to, to be able to trans you know uh, translate what you do in your tool shed to a, a career." And I remember early days going, "We can't fail, we can't stop." Like we people are depending on us to get this done. We are like inspiring other people's dreams to do this as well. We have to get this done, and it's a it's an inspirational thing, right? So you, you wake up in the morning with a, a real urgency to uh, to push forward, right? So it's yeah. So it's uh, that being said, it's terrifying because everything in our lives is on the line. Yeah, I never play poker, but I know what all in means now. <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing. Uh, those guys have so much passion um, and they took their dream and are just making it a reality. They've put every ounce of blood, sweat and tears into that brewery and it's so exciting to see them brewing now and brewing back in Alberta um, and they can kind of bring their brand home. I just saw his passion immediately and I just saw what they were trying to do and I, I just envisioned like where they would be in five years. You know, who knows, who knew that a year later they'd be where they're at. Other craft breweries in town are not the competition. We kind of collectively compete with macro beer because we want to teach, you know, the average beer drinker why you shouldn't be drinking, you know, the macro beer. There's so much out there with so much flavor and, and don't get stuck in that trap of just saying, oh yeah, I'll have a bud or I'll have, you know, whatever it is because that's your brand, right? Uh, there's so much out there. Paul Gatra at Big Rock said it best. He said, it's like we all work for the same company. And I've been in situations where, where they've said, oh, we'll take, uh, you know, we'll take that, we'll give you that Big Rock tap. I'm like, don't give me that tap. I'm like, give me that tap, right? Like, don't take the local craft beer off. Right, and, and people are sometimes surprised to hear that because in, in the beer world, of course, you're fighting for taps, right? But in the craft beer world, there's almost, it's, and I think it's an unspoken code because I don't ever say, I'll never take your tap, man. But when you're sitting there talking to that guy and he's like, I'll give you this tap, I will actually say to him, nah, that's a good tap. Give me that one, right? Some of the people in uh, in the yeast wranglers and the homebrewers guild up in Edmonton, there's a there's a bunch of groups of super high end beer geeks. These are our people. These are these are homebrewers, right? But we actually get intimidated when we go to those to those meetings because a good majority of the people in, the, in those uh, groups brew better beer than Jeff and I do, right? I mean, these are guys who obsess all day and all night about what they're brewing. Like if every if every brewery could have guys like that working there, I mean, I can't even imagine the, the kind of beers that would be in the world. I don't think enough people give credit to how good the beers are. If you went to a home brewing uh, um, a, a competition and judged some of the beers, I get goosebumps. Actually, a home brewer came in here the other day and gave me goosebumps with the beer he gave me. It was amazing. It was one of the best IPAs. It, it blew my mind, right? 
We're actually launching a beer that has nothing more to do with Toolshed than it's a place for homebrewers to come and brew a beer and get it into the market. So, so we're just gonna pick a home brewer and say, next batch is yours. And if you've got an amazing beer, we'll teach you how to scale it up to the big system. You'll work with our graphic designer, get a label for the cans. You'll be in national and craft. You'll be able to tell your family, come to co-op and buy a six pack of my beer. And so we, because we've been able to enjoy that experience of sitting at a place like National and hearing somebody over my shoulder order my beer, you know, I'm like, he doesn't know, I'm just some retarded home brewer, right? And I'm losing my mind right now that this guy just ordered my beer, it's the best moment of my life. We're gonna give that to other home brewers.